Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Fabrizio Manfredi for Holman, and um, I'm a senior consultant in data infrastructure, where uh, data means uh, mail server, radio server, and many other protocol for authentication of the device, like Cisco or many other communication system. And sometimes we deliver also a distributed file system solution. Yeah. Uh, the agenda of today, of this session, is divided in three main parts. On uh, overview, I try to introduce the concept. And I'll ask more question. How many people use distributed file system? Like FS? Yeah, no other file system like parallel file system or peer-to-peer -peer file system or something like that. Parallel? GFS2. GFS2. That's GFS or PGFS? GFS? GFS. GFS for me is a cluster file system. It's not because you export uh, through a network block device. It for me is not a, a distributed file system. It's a cluster file system for a shared disk. But anyway you can build on, on the shared disk uh, on uh, a distributed file system. And uh, when uh, I try to make a small overview about distributed file system and the advantages of a distributed file system, and uh, I try to explain two solutions. One solution is based on very stable product that is an OpenFS and is a bit old design file system. And uh, we try to see what happened today in distributed file system with two new file system. One is a, a file system based on Adobe. Adobe is a framework and is based on HDFS, Adobe file system, Adobe. And uh, for me, one of the best distributed file systems today is CAPH. That uh, is very well designed. One is one of the best today. Obviously, at the end, we tried some conclusion. First of all, why do you want to use distributed file system? Uh, distributed file system generally can handle terabyte of data. And uh, many times it's transparent to the final user. A small example, transparent what, uh, what I say, what I mean in, in this case. Uh, if you have uh, two big server of uh, 100 terabyte each server, the final user we will see two drive in a Windows environment. In the, in the transparent, in, uh, in the FS, you, you don't know where is this, the file directory, how many systems is composed. So you have a single system interface. Many times, in special way, the open FS, AFS, and the system working very well in, in uh, wide area network. In general, NFS, for example, work very well in local area network. Many times, uh, or better, one of the aim of the distributed file system is a good level of scalability. If you buy a um, storage, you must decide the maximum capacity of your storage because your shelf, your shelf, pardon, have a limited place of hard drive. In case of distributed file system, you don't have this problem. You put machine. When you don't have, uh, you don't have enough space, you can put a new machine on your system. Then it's very scalable in uh, not, uh, not like a uh, storage, and in a special way, it's scalable in horizontal, no, not in vertical way. If you use uh, a normal machine, normal computer is expensive. The normal computer is generally very inexpensive if you buy from Dell or if you build at home. In this distributed file system, also you have a high level of performance because you have many systems that work, not a single system. You are not bootleg in general. Some difference between centralized storage and distributed file system. Centralized storage, you have um, a block device interface if you use a storage area network. That means you put your hard drive outside of your computer. You don't share nothing. You put only the, your hard drive outside. If you use a network attached storage, you can share your facility to many other people, but you use a common 
communication protocol like NFS, Chief, FTP, for example, some, uh, some NAS use FTP. In general, it's simple to handle a centralized storage because you have only one machine to make administration tasks. No? And uh, on the other hand, is also a single point of failure. That's, okay, you have two power supply, you have two controller, many disks, but if you have some, some problem, you have a single point of failure. On the other hand, DFS gives you a single first system across all your computer. And uh, it's a bit complicated to handle 50 or 100 PC or, pardon, uh, server that you m must to use the right tool for deploy, for management, for monitoring, because you have much, many, many machines. But it's scalable, and many times uh, today is uh, also a good level of high availability because if you have uh, 10 machines, one machine is in crash and you have a distributed for system without replication or not high availability, you lose only a small part of your file system, but you continue to work. If you have a problem on, sing, on uh, storage area network, entire file system stops to work. Some, the advantages, uh, the main advantage for me is that uh, many small server give you the same performance or a bigger machine. You can increase in capacity. And uh, in a certain way, you have a better manageability. That, uh, because you have a small machine, you move small machine, non rack, entire rack. And uh, you can increase your capacity in the level that you want. This is slide is made in special way for the manager. Let the manager understand the, the cost, how many dollars in this case uh, you need to spend for a storage. And uh, in DFS, the price of DFS is based on um, inexpensive machine, but with three guarantee, on-site guarantee, warranty. No, that you can reduce this cost. You can reach probably 4,000 euros. But the very interesting thing is, is on the large environment, you have a very low cost. The price of a, a storage area network and also the big area machine file server is, uh, I, I retrieve from Sun, the storage, this is a storage tech price. The price of your storage, uh, we, we can read in the left, that is, uh, very different from uh, type of your hard drive. If you use a uh, high speed hard drive like storage, uh, SCSI attached, or a fiber channel, the price is very high. If you use the SATA, the price decreases a lot. But also the size is, is very important for the price. The size is important for one hand the price, for the other hand for the speed. Many are drives much faster because you can make the operation in parallel. And um, other cost that is not show, but this is very important, is in the installation. You must have space, you must network, because if you have 50 machines, you have a cost of a switch. In special way, the fiber channel switch is very, very expensive. Um, I think eight port fiber channel is around 6,000 euro. It's not like eight on the channel. And also a supply this is quite important. Uh, many times when you buy a, a storage area network, you have some software cost. Not everything is in your solution. An example, if you have um, many channel, many control, and many port on your storage area network, many times the base level of the software permit you only the full tolerant, not the low balancing. If you want the low balancing, you must pay a fee, an extra fee. That is the same uh, in special way for the low hand, the entry level storage. Uh, you have a, a maximum of machine to connect for, for machine many times from example from IBM if you buy IBM storage the uh, you can connect only for machine if you want to 
connect more machine rooms to pay a fee. Many times in a storage environment, you have a damping. You, make, you can obtain a, a big discount because it's important for the company to sell to you the shelf. And um, another that is not mentioned here is uh, obviously uh, administration task. That's, if you, uh, your IT manager or IT staff don't know the solution, you need to learn, you need external, perhaps external help uh, with consultant, and thank you, and, uh, and so on. That is, a, is another very big cost. Well, we already said a lot of DFS, and um, DFS is not one file system. Probably uh, 100 or 200 file systems was created from the AT, but many of these file systems was uh, academic or research oriented, not very stable, not very usable. No? And uh, in the uh, in distributed file system, we have uh, five main categories that um, I don't like, but NFS and uh, Windows is uh, considered distributed. That is uh, the first level. The second level is a distributed full torrent file system and uh, Coda is already dead, it's, uh, it's evolution of FS, and um, is also, uh, I implemented some basic function on uh, full tolerance, that means if you have a crash, your system don't replicate immediately or put a new machine and so on, that's uh, uh, you, you have a high availability of the, your server or your data. A parallel file system is another distributed file system very important for scientific, research. And parallel, obviously, can permit to retrieve the file from multiple search. That is very important for scientific with a big full output that we find that is very famous Lustra and uh, VPFS too. And uh, finally, we find uh, Adobe, but uh, also Gloucester, FS, and um, Mojile that is a distributed parallel full tolerance file system that perhaps is the best, but not so, so easy to see. And uh, not very used peer-to-peer uh, -peer file system. This is a, because uh, uh, the distributed file system is, is a big environment with a, a lot of problem, and uh, the, obviously the uh, scientific community need fa uh, be faster, the company must be to be readable and so on. But for this reason, burn a lot of our file system. The first, the first solution that I will present is, is based on OpenFS. AFS and file system burn was um, designed from 1984 from Carnegie Mellon University and was designed for uh, handle 10,000 workstation and uh, 20,000 a uh, user. That was a big project. And uh, for handle all this client, the, the first things was to introduce on the client side a cache. The cache here don't mean cache, memory cache, but mean this cache. You can reserve two, three gigabytes of disk space for cache of your FS. That means when you retrieve a file, the file is put in your cache. And um, if you see NFS, for example, when you read a file, you read a file and transmit the file from the network, where you receive a file, you work, and you close. And after three or two seconds, the file disappears from your machine. That if you reopen the file, you retransmit over the net. That is not happening in OpenFS. OpenFS check only if the uh, file is still valid, is still unchanged. It's not completely true because uh, it's not uh, checked anymore because uh, AFS was one of the systems that uh, is based on callback. That we are in 1984. And <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. And uh, another nice thing in a special way for 1984 was um, 10,000 workstations use the same binary, the same program. That uh, this means is that uh, unchangeable, no? 
And for this reason was introduced a replication, a read-only replication. You can replicate some data on many machines, and the system permit to you to retrieve in load balancing that you retrieve from the less load server, only the read-only data, pay attention. Um, transparent assets, transparent assets, uniform path. Uh, the path is always the same on all the machines in the world. Uh, can I explain a bit better? If you use NFS, you can mount your first system where you want. On the AFS, it's not, uh, you, don't, you can't, you can mount. You, you find the, F, the FS path always the same in your machine. Slash FS, slash cell, slash so on. That's a, it's a very similar to uh, HTTP. No, that is the same path in, around the world. And for this reason, uh, many people say that is uh, the biggest file system in the world. And um, yeah, uh, the the volume the volume uh, is um, in a certain way similar to the logical volume is um, a container of your file and your directory. And this container you can move from server without outage. You don't need to stop. You don't need to stop the machine. You don't need to stop the user. You can move. For example, if you have a machine is too low, is overloaded, and you w want to move some user to another machine, you can make without uh, notice to maintenance or something similar. Uh, another big area is the security. We are in 1984, but um, the conclusion of the project was in 1988, and uh, AFS used Kerberos 4. Today, you can use Kerberos 5 because. Um, uh, NFS, I take always NFS because born in the same age, born in the same, uh, in 1988. And um, the NFS uh, trust the ID sent by the client, the, the client machine. But if you have 10,000 clients around your campus, probably you can't trust to that, this ID. For this reason was introduced the Kerberos. And also, if you have 2,000 clients, uh, probably you have uh, some problem to handle groups, uh, handle subsystem, handle subdirectory permission. And um, in 1984 was introduced the ACL. OpenFS start and burn with equals. Also, another very nice thing for uh, OpenFS, the user can create its own group. It's not administration task that you can handle permission to your directory and file in very dynamic way and very flexible way because you can add or remove people. There is a, a, a small limitation. In general, you can create more than 25 groups, but this is another story. Um, system management, uh, yeah, you, have, uh, you already said that is a problem if you have a, a lot of machine. Um, system management gives you a system a single system interface. You can make system administration task where you want. You don't have a console. You don't have a central point. It's a distributor. You can make all the tasks where you want. And also, you can delegate administration task, administration permission to other users. If you have a very big company with a lot of branch office and headquarters, you can give the administration task of the branch office of the directory related in the OpenFS to the people, IT staff of the branch office, for example. And um, it's not very used, but it also present uh, uh, backup system internally that uh, you can schedule backup and um, you can uh, create uh, volume backup, but this is more technical. And uh, anyway, it was uh, fought in 1984 all about for administration. But yeah. Now I try to explain for the people that don't, don't know AFS some basic component of uh, AFS. AFS is simple, it's not complicated. Um, first of all, we already said we have a, a unique path that everything stay reside under AFS. The first part is the cell. The cell is similar to the domain. The cell contains all the server. The server contains the volume. Okay? That's the 
quite simple. The volume contains the file and the directory, and this is a, the small entity on the AFS. We have three types of volume. One is a read-write, that typically that the people sometimes need to write the file. And uh, you have a read-only, you already mentioned uh, for the replica. The read-only volume is a, a volume replicator. This is a replica from a read-write. And we have a backup volume. The backup volume is, um, is similar as, as a snapshot and contains uh, the difference that means you reduce the space for the. If you need to make a backup and you can stop the, the people to work, you can make a volume backup. And um, this backup is a, a snapshot of the volume that uh, you find that the system handle the storage information as a different that you reduce the space. The mount point is uh, very similar to the Unix file system with a small difference, with a very, very small difference. That uh, you don't need a mount point created. In general, in Unix file system, you need to create directory before to mount the partition. In the AFS, it's, uh, it's not the case of AFS. Uh, the volume is changed immediately in a volume, in a directory. And you can mount where you want but you create a, a, a tree that is the same on all the machines. That we have cell name, FS is present everywhere. Cell name, in my case, I decided to use, uh, we are a company spread around the world. That we have uh, Italy and many, Italy, Norway, and so on. And uh, branch uh, for the branch office, and we have many other. And, um, one of, one of the things a bit different between um, uh, this partitioning and the volume, you must to use must. No, it's better to use much volumes as possible because you move the volume. That in general you you don't need to create many partitions on your system. In this case, you must. Is it better? This is the list on the infrastructure of uh, FS. Uh, in the FS, we have two main categories, and we have file server, where we find two main uh, process. That means you don't need two machine. It's only process. It's only a category. And um, the file server is obviously give you the file, and the volume server to keep the information about the volume. On the database um, server, that is a centralized point you will find the uh, Kerberos database. You will find protection server that is a group database. And uh, you will find a, vo a volume location, vol or better, volume locator. Because um, we have seen in the previous slide, we can mount the volume on the file system. But on the file system, you don't have reference where is the volume in which server. For this reason, you need to make a lookup before. All this database is uh, based on uh, Ubic. Ubic was developed in 1984. It's, uh, it's very similar to a transaction distribution database. Because uh, if you lose a database server and you have only one machine, the entire net, the entire cell is shut down. For this reason, was develop a database, distributed database that keeping information, and you can put many database servers that you want. That is a 1984. Yeah, typical problem. How can you use OpenFS? Now you understand uh, a lot of things, I hope. And um, typical problem of the company is a shared document, user use own directory, application, for storage, and, uh, and sometimes uh, quite area network. And the solution, my, my typical solution, my deploy, uh, is based on OpenFS. And because it's scalable, I have ability, good in uh, uh, wide area network, and also is uh, inexpensive because it's free from 2000. Uh, from 90, 2000 was uh, IBM product. 
that also was a bit expensive. From 2000, IBM decided to discontinue the product and give the search to, give the search to OpenFS and start OpenFS. Um, for a lot of reasons, we decide to not, to not use the Windows uh, OpenFS client. We use Samba as a gateway. Because, first of all, you must install crap 100 clients that you, we don't have a package manager. And also, it's not so stable. Or better, it's stable, the solution, but it's not very well today. Probably next year we will uh, a very, a very jump in the, in the new class. Um, we, we decide to use Heimdall as a Kerberos server because Kindle you can use a backend and also is a uh, Kerberos 4. Kerberos is a, in OpenFS is not through Kerberos 4. There are Kerberos 4 with a small change. But anyway, KE emulation, that is the name of a, uh, authentication server in uh, OpenFS. And uh, to use OpenLDAP to centralize all the information of the user. In uh, OpenLDAP you find uh, Samba, <laughs> Samba uh, information for the domain, you will find uh, uh, IFS information, mail server information, and so on. The typical uh, Active Directory, in a certain way. And we use read by volume for shared development area, document storage, uh, user room, and read only for the application. We use also IFS for deployed application to the client. We put and replicate the, the content. The design of the solution, uh, you have three levels. The first level, you have the client. The Windows client use a, a, a Samba gateway and um, the AFS server and uh, some AFS client use directly the storage layer. This is a storage layer, this is a gateway layer. Um, in this way, we, have, we can increase capacity without change on the Samba. Or if we have too many clients, we can increase in capacity on the user level. And uh, yeah, we, in this case, we use only three servers, or we gigabits network. That uh, advantage to use Samba is uh, Windows is client, uh, is automatically, uh, is clientless. You don't need a, a client. And we have a, a, lo a good load balancing and a special way the roaming user and branch office. You, if you, we have here, is not designed, a branch office, uh, we have put a cache, a client cache, with a Samba export. That we have a good performance. Some tricks when you try to develop the solution. Uh, you need at least three server. That if you want to test one server, that's okay. But you want to use in production, because the Ubic database server, transaction server, um, make an election, and uh, that means you must to reach a quorum. That if you have only two server, you can reach the quorum because you have only 50 percent. No, and uh, for this reason, you need a three server for reach a quorum to make. And if you don't reach a quorum, all the entire cell go in read-only state. You can read file, but you can change. Uh, if you use a gateway, that we learn in, uh, after some here, that um, the cache is, uh, is a good thing. If you, if you have a lot of user on the same machine, it's a nice thing to use a separated disk. Because uh, we will see in the performance that, um, you read a local disk for the operation. That is better to take separate. Obviously, uh, if you use, use many machines, many space, a good thing is make a design of your directory tree because it will be the same. This will be uh, the people uh, memorize in a certain way, learn the tree. That is difficult to change when you, you can change, but perhaps the people didn't find, don't find the things. Um, we already said that the volume, when you mount the volume on the, on the path, on the, on the 
uh, on the system, you don't have reference. That means um, perhaps you can't understand where it is. You have a volume name, but you don't know where it's mount, in which part of your tree. That uh, use a name of volume that can give you some information. For example, uh, home directory, home dot use of name, and so on. Uh, application for Windows, app dot win, or many other things. But anyway, you must to is a good thing a uh, naming convention because otherwise it's very difficult to find the volume on the tree. You must to check all the tree to find the volume. Already said that use much volume much as possible, and um, we will see mm, there are some cases that uh, use uh, 2,000, 20,000 volume because it's the m small container that you can move, and it's not it's not cost. It's not, you don't have cost to make volume. Um, make a replication, obviously, that's increase a lot. Uh, of uh, uh, read-only data, but in a special way, uh, make a replication of mount point. Here, I don't have a, a path, but um, sometimes you use a directory like a mount point, for example, a volume like a mount point, for example, slash fs, slash your cell, slash home. Under the home, all your user. If the home is a volume with the size zero that you don't store information, when the system make a lookup of the volume, must to check where is the volume home. Then the volume is not changed because it's, it's a, you can store, you, you decide to not store information in this volume, then you can replicate and the people when make a lookup can make a balance between server is not a bootleg. That's yeah, it's not simple to explain, but perhaps uh, in a, in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in at the end. And don't uh, I think today the, the maximum rate per server and concurrent user is 400 per server. With NFS probably is only 50. Yeah. The solution we have deployed, one of the solutions is 3FS, 3 terabytes, we based on RAID 5, to Samba server, switch uh, 2 gigabit switch in backend, and um, 400 concurrent Unix user, and 250 concurrent Windows user. That everything seems goes very well. Performance, that's probably is more interesting. Um, on the, on the Linux performance, on the, on the Unix performance, we have um, 20, 35 megabytes per second, but it depends on your server. But it would be difficult to exceed the 50 megabytes per second because um, there are some limitations in the protocol. And um, probably the, today the, the, the maximum speed is uh, 50, 60 megabytes per second. But 50 megabytes per second, each client that if you use uh, an interactive way, that is a, a good speed. And uh, you can see that uh, if the file is very small, your speed is around five, eight megabytes per second because you have a overhead about uh, lookup. Then when the file increase in size, you can increase the speed because the, the time of lookup is uh, uh, spread over all the time. And um, if you change the size of the kilobyte you write, that you don't have many change on the speed. That, for example, here the file size, and in this size we have the block size that we write each time. On the other hand, on the read, that uh, if you have a call that the, the file is not present in your cache, you have 30, 35. Uh, megabyte per second, but it's very interesting when you have a file in your cache, you reach uh, the maximum speed of your disk. It's uh, very close to read a file system directly. That uh, we in this machine we have reached 90, 100 megabyte per second. Probably you can increase if you want to use uh, memory, 
a cache you can use if you want instead to use uh, to put the cache on the, on the disk to put the cache on the memory the gateway obviously we lose uh, a bit uh, in special way the maximum because we have two uh, we have two communication two network communication that is very is a big overhead because the first communication is between client to samba uh, gateway and the second is from uh, samba gateway to fs server and uh, also here we can notice the performance for the small file that small file in this case is a I think, uh, yeah, one megabyte. Until one megabyte, you have a speed around five megabytes per second. That I think is quite good. And um, uh, that is on, on the bride. On, on the read, we reach um, the maximum speed. This speed is um, the same speed that Samba can give you read the file system directly. But we don't lose performance in this case. Because this is a, in a certain way, it's not fault of Samba, but it's a maximum speed that you can retrieve from Samba. Obviously, this is a warm cache. Who use um, today OpenFS? I take, uh, for example, but there are many small examples. Uh, 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 I take obviously the, the, the biggest one, but uh, many people use also in a small environment of five, three terabyte data. We have Morgan Stanley with um, internal usage, 22,000 uh, clients and uh, 450 terabytes. And uh, I take four different examples. One is a client side internal usage for interactive. Um, one is an um, application, web in application. Picatech is a picture album online. And uh, 200, uh, this is a data of last year that probably already reached the 4,000, 400, pardon, 400 terabytes. And uh, we can see 800,000 volume and a lot of uh, files. And uh, Avian is a, another application that is a bit different because you can mount and use a shared folder for internet and already reach uh, half, uh, one, uh, 500 terabytes. And, but a very small client base because it's only 300 application server. In this case, the client is application server. And um, Max Planck. Uh, use for um, institute is uh, use IFS for um, obviously uh, research scientific research that you have a lot of environment a lot of different problems. Well, this is a whole uh, 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 old design. Some question on this part? That break coffee? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because uh, yeah. Um, what is good for, for, uh, good for uh, general purpose? No, many inter, inter, uh, interaction, wider network, heterogeneous system. We have in OpenFS 22, 24 platform support today. That's uh, from Linux uh, to Unix, uh, commercial Unix, uh, uh, Mac OS 6, and uh, also Windows. That is uh, improving a lot. And in special way, if you have uh, read more the right operation. Uh, it's not good for um, locking if you have a lot of locking, in a special way if you need a by range locking. And obviously database, no sense, put a uh, database on uh, the, the, the file data, the data control on uh, database. At the moment we don't have on Unicode support. And performance, because if uh, you see the performance of parallel file system, is, uh, the, the performance of IFS is quite small. But um, uh, Max Planck already developed a solution based on OSD. It's, uh, it's possible to download the patch, and probably in the next release we will see. And uh, that change uh, OpenFS in a parallel file system also. The new way. The new way is... Um, 
OpenFS was uh, was great, is great, and many people learn a lot. And uh, one of the things learned was um, probably it's better to divide the metadata information from the data, the, the file, the content of your file. This approach is, uh, the name of this approach is object-based storage. And um, the object-based uh, storage replace the block device with an object storage device. Then we have separated the metadata to information. In this way, you have your information that, or better, your information you can split in many, in, in many small parts, in many chunks. That means you can create a parallel channel, stream parallel channel. You can retrieve from many source, parallel file system. And uh, also you can simplify the replication because you, you don't have an entire file. You, you don't handle an entire file, but you handle many small pieces. That uh, files are striped across a set of nodes that you have uh, the node that uh, the client can receive the, the, the information from many, many nodes. That uh, uh, on the other side, OpenFS, you receive the entire file from a single server. That's a big difference. Obviously, uh, the chunk, if you can replicate the chunk when you want. Hadoop is uh, one of, um, is a framework. And in the framework uh, is present uh, HDFS, is a, file system, a distributed file system, parallel. And um, everything starts of the idea, uh, moving computation is cheaper than moving data. Uh, in this way, you can more scalable, economical if you use a machine without uh, uh, controller RAID or uh, uh, double power supply, you, if you can buy an entry-level machine. It's obviously efficient because you make the um, computation directly from the machine. And uh, if you replicate, your data is also more reliable. Everything add up is, um, everything is um, based on ad, a map reduced concept. That map reduced uh, was the first lab library of map reduced was delivered in uh, 2003, I think, from Google. And um, it's quite simple is uh, make a map of your input, that you make a map, a k value pair list and you finally reduce that. You can put the map, that is not completely true, but you can put the map, op map operation on the data node, directly to the node of your server. No, that's it. Uh, Ato, uh, Adobe is a mm, map reduce base with a very small difference because you use a combined, but you learn more. If you're interested, you can check the, the website. And uh, in this way, you can keep your information, no? you map, and you reduce. That all the nodes is a very similar to a grid. No? That you have a very simple distribution system and grid system. How it work HDFS? We have already said we have um, metadata separated from the information that we, metadata stay or res reside on name node. And uh, the information are stored in a data node. The name node know uh, everything about the, the chunk and uh, your client asks to name node of the list of server and chunk and also other information that give you the security that the chunk is not corrupted. But anyway, you have a, a list of uh, data nodes, and you can retrieve in parallel all the pieces of your file. I forget. That's another interesting thing. And add up uh, HDFS uh, 
uh, automatically try to put the replication in different rack, different set, obviously in different server, but in different rack. And you can drive this function with the extension, but it's very simple. Well, problem. The problem was the centralization log. Centralization log, uh, I have a company that uh, use uh, 400, yeah, 450 terabyte for collect all the data for six months. And uh, that's, you have a, a big problem of uh, storage, and, uh, but we, don't, we, uh, we didn't use uh, Adobe for, the, for, for this, uh, but only for a, a small, smallest one at the moment. Uh, because the uh, Adobe is a version uh, 0.17.2, I think. That perhaps is a bit earlier now, but it worked very well. Uh, um, the solution is uh, HDFS, Airbit for the data node, because the data node is a single point of failure of uh, the system of Adobe, because you replicate the data, but not the metadata. At the moment, it's not present system to replicate the information that you must do with a, a shared storage, uh, or if you, if you want to mount an FS partition. And we use a syslog ng for syslog concentrator. And we write some um, map reduce function to search uh, and to try something that goes wrong on the system and keep maintaining, uh, monitoring the log of all, all the system. Perhaps uh, we will use Mahout in, uh, in the next step. The design is quite simple. We have all the our server send through UDP port, syslog port to the syslog concentrator. That syslog concentrator today is two machine with the syslog NG. And the uh, syslog concentrator write directly to Hadoop, uh, HDFS, through a fuse that uh, HDFS is mounted with um, a, a fusion module. And uh, we have a console that can send and retrieve information from HD, HDFS uh, with um, a specialized uh, class for input, for reduce, for map, and so on. Uh, the solution gives you a great performance because uh, you can work, all the node work in the search when you search something. And uh, obviously, we can increase the capacity without problem because you put a new machine, very low cost machine because you don't need uh, HDFS make automatically a replication of the uh, failure node, failure disk that you can put very low quality machine. And um, scale on demand, that's already said that uh, uh, you can increase your capacity when you want. This is our environment, two log server, two switch in the back, one gigabit, and um, well, two name node and uh, five uh, data node. Uh, some tricks, um, that is, um, this is solution is still more uh, uh, under, under test, uh, and uh, we try a lot of things, interesting things, uh, and uh, much server as possible, obviously, because uh, it's computation, and uh, Keep attention to the block size. Uh, block size is the stripe of your file to spread around the data node server. That means um, uh, it's important because, um, for example, if you take one gigabyte, five gigabyte of file, and you decide your block size is uh, uh, 10 megabytes, that means you need, uh, uh, when you start a search process, uh, 500 uh, uh, thread because each chunk, each block is handled in a map, in, in, a, in a map with a, a thread that you must to take attention about the block size. Uh, yeah, parallel stream. That's uh, every work with TCP/IP. That is very important. The network. Don't use 100 megabyte network much more better, one gigabyte, obviously, because you move everything from the network. Uh, for the search, uh, yeah, it's quite simple. Write your own function. Uh, because you can use um, uh, Adobe and uh, uh, use the Unix command. For example, um, you can make a um, cat 
uh, file from uh, the map and uh, use a reduced uh, grep that you can use Unix command. You can uh, map the, your, the function with a Unix command. This is a streaming function. And, uh, but it's much better to write the own function. It's, it's, very not, it's very simple. It's very, very simple. You can install Adobe in 20 minutes, I think. You read the documentation and start. Um, don't use all the hardware. Yes, I say you can use a very low quality, and many times the people, especially when in Linux environment, oh, wonderful, uh, Linux requires a low resource. It's not this case, because everything is right in Java, first of all. Second, <laughs> first, everything is right in Java. That's, no, it's not that, yeah. Uh, I can say because there is someone here that know very well Ado, but uh, um, uh, you lose per node, for per data node, uh, with Java, I think, 40, 50 power of your machine. When you use, you lose a uh, 50%. Because it is everything in user space, everything is a uh, Java space. Um, then, need a very high speed network, and uh, also is a good thing, new hardware that is inexpensive. Don't think to reuse old hardware that, okay, I want to make a, a cluster, I use a very old hardware. No, not work very well. Uh, you already said is a gigabit network is very, gigabit network is very important. And also you can use Adobe, Adobe um, software distribution. When you create your function and something you can deploy through you don't need to install on all the nodes. That's quite useful if, um, if you uh, create your own function and uh, you need some configuration file and so on. Who use it? Uh, Yahoo, because I'm the main maintainer, no? And Amazon, Facebook, and also Last.fm. Uh, you will find on the website of Adobe uh, large installation and small installation. Good for, it's not a true file system, it's not an interactive file system. That uh, works very well for read, that read operation, many, re many read operation and some write operation. And um, you have a, a, a uh, if you need a, a high through output or data access, and if you need a task distribution, that is, is a basic uh, grid function. You have a basic grid function in it. Uh, it's not general purpose, it's not POSIX, mm, very, very low level POSIX compliant, and uh, mm, it's not very secure. That is a, but it's, very, it's perfect for store a lot of information, search, and uh, so on. For this reason, it's voice developer. Um, a very brief introduction about Chef. Chef uh, was uh, developed and released. Uh, the first release was uh, last year, I think, so, and tried to uh, address three main problems, scalability, performance, and reliability. Um, other features are POSIX, it's very POSIX compliant, uh, can scale very well, uh, can handle gigabyte to petabyte data, and um, have uh, n way replication, not only read only replication, but also read write replication. Quite easy to deploy today because um, it's a user space, but in the next release we will see also a kernel space. How it works, this typical OSD system. Uh, you have a client, the client asks to the metadata cluster server the information about the chunks, and the chunks are retrieved from object storage. Uh, some very nice feature about um, Chef is, um, is dynamic, that out balance the, the tree about distribution of the information, metadata, and also data. And uh, also is a very real, uh, good reliable level because uh, um, automatically uh, recover and restart the replica on the information, failure detection, and many other things. 
Yeah, here you can see the difference between old style system. This has three with all information with a new style that many times is present. This, this is present in uh, SCSI X11. Yeah, the architecture, uh, um, everything is based on CRUSH. CRUSH is an algorithm, a pseudo algorithm to distribution the data that is used on um, a many level. We can see the file, the split in object. The object is uh, split in a, a object group, and the object group is uh, put on the disk. For, um, for this reason, we also, the, 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 uh, the, peop the, the team developed a file object file system. So this is not based on uh, X3, X3 or X2, or is own file system. Object oriented, obviously. This is a, um, an example how to work a replication. And um, the primary send information to the other replica. And you have to, to acknowledge. The first acknowledge is when the data is write in memory. And the second acknowledge is when the data is write to disk. And um, also, the knowledge here is sent when a number of replica already write the information on the memory. That's to reduce the time of commit phase. Because uh, in this way, you are quasi compliant about the commit phase. What is good? Um, general purpose, that you can do everything. Uh, I throw output, uh, you can use for read, for write, you don't have. Uh, problem is coherent, coherent. Well, yeah, pardon. And what is bad is uh, very young, and at the moment is only Linux. Um, conclusion, because the time is finished. Uh, well, if you want to use a DFS, uh, obviously uh, uh, it don't exist a generic DFS that you must to uh, find. Uh, you understand what your, your requirement, read, many read, and so on. Uh, also the size, and um, how many replication, no? and uh, try to divide your, um, your server, your service in uh, system class, because uh, don't mean, if you use a distributed distributor for system with many machines, that don't need to use the same machine for all server, the same model. For example, for the home directory, you can use a storage based on a SATA disk. And for other application, perhaps uh, to use a SCSI, that you can divide in this way the service and give a service level. And uh, a very important thing is to find the right monitoring tools and system deploying tools. That if you have a lot of machine, you can't open 50 console each time. You must do a small things. No. Yeah, I have a wonderful uh, distributed shell if you want. <laughs> for this reason. Uh, yeah, it's broken. Perfect. Time's up. Cafe. We have time for one question. No, uh, one one moment. I finish. <laughs> when uh, well. Adop, uh, what happened in uh, what we want to do uh, to export directly for, uh, with Samba? We want to use um, a test uh, HBase that uh, uh, Adop can create a big table. Uh, the people, do you know big table from Google? No. Anyway, check on the Wikipedia with big table that is possible. Uh, Solar is a um, system for search. On FF, OpenFS, there are a lot of things. And uh, yeah, reference is uh, quite uh, simple. The last. This is the last. Uh, <laughs> there are many other file systems. And uh, perhaps I talk only two file systems, but there is also Gluster is a very good solution. Uh, ModulFS is a very good solution. PFS2 for uh, scientific research is a good solution, and Lustre probably is uh, one of the best solution for the, uh, this is open. That obviously if you want a commercial product, you can find many other things. This is a Yahoo installation, a small.
<laughs> yeah, uh, Fragen? Okay, thanks. <laughs>